Okay, in this section of the video, we're going to talk about systems initialization from Chapter 7. The first thing the book talks about is run levels. Um, run levels are something one doesn't deal with very much, but um, uh, explicitly, but they're very important to the Linux system or the Unix system. Uh, basically, there are run levels. Um, um, the book gives a um, table of run levels. They start from um, zero and go through um, run level six. Um, once again, they're sort of strange because we don't change run levels explicitly very much, so sometimes you can almost kind of forget about run levels. But uh, run level zero is halt. The way you change run levels, if you wanted to change run levels, is go to one of your um, console screens, like hit the keys Control Alt F1 or Control Alt F2, and that gets you to just a console screen. Actually, do Control Alt F1, and at that point, log in as root. Um, you need to be root to change run levels because that changes something really pretty fundamental about your system. If you would type the word init, I-N-I-T, that will change your run levels um, to whatever you want it to be. So if you typed in I-N-I-T space um, zero, I suppose that would halt your system. I don't remember whether I've ever halted a system that way. I usually halt my systems by typing the shut down command. Uh, normally, what I type is shut down space minus H space um, zero space now uh, or something like that. Uh, type man space shut down and uh, it, it will tell you about the shutdown command. There's also a command called halt or maybe it's called halt sys. Um, that depends on your system a little bit and it varies from Unix to Unix. Um, that will halt a system quite quickly. Um, I use, but a better, more organized way to do it is with shutdown. If you do want to change a um, the the other um, run level that's interesting is run level one, which you can get to by typing uh, init space um, one i n i t space one, and that is single user mode only. You only have the root console and nothing else. One root console and nothing else. And that's also, I think that's also sometimes called maintenance mode. Um, and um, that's sometimes used for maintain, uh, system maintenance because that means all your servers are shut down. Uh, nobody can be logged in. Um, the system is really quiet. Um, that's a good mode to use when you're doing things like the um, FS disk. Um, um, FSCK for um, um, for um, uh, repairing your disk drives or checking the integrity of your disk drives. Um, I suppose you could use it for backing up a system, um, although I usually like to have a little more networking and stuff when I'm doing backups. So I, I uh, most people wouldn't shut it down that far for backups. Um, maybe we used to in the old days. Actually, I know we used to in the old days, but uh, we don't anymore. Um, the I'm looking at our run levels here. Um, I'm not quite sure the difference between run levels two and three, but run level three is quite popular. Run level three means basically have everything running except the graphics, graphical user interface. Run level three is often the run level you might run at if you're running a uh, web server because you don't need any graphical user interface to run a web server or an FTP server. So often they will run those at run level three. Um, running the GUIs on that are just unneeded systems overhead. Um, the truth is, though, usually there's not much difference between run level three and run level five on a server because often you don't bother to install the graphical software. So, um, so 
you know, if, if it's not installed, it doesn't much matter. It's not going to run anyway. Um, run level 5 is the run level that we normally run most of our systems at. Certainly our, um, our workstations that are on our desktops, that is the run level that normally has the GUI on it. And, um, um, so you can log on with the GUI. So if you've got some time, play with your systems and when they're quiet and, uh, and go to a console and type init1 and then try init3 and suddenly a lot of things will start up automatically and then try init5 uh, and it will start up your, um, um, your um, graphical user interface and you can log on. And then if you go back and type init3, well, the user interface crashes. Um, actually, I don't think it will. I think only the automatic login uh, for the user interface comes down. If you happen to be logged in, don't quote me on this, but I believe you will remain logged in because it's only the what we call XDM that comes crashing down. Uh, and that's only the part that actually lets you log on with the graphical user interface. If you figure out another way to get on, you're on. So if you've already logged on, you're on. Okay, other startup um, commands here, or, or other startup uh, files. The book talks about a file called init tab. Let's look at the init tab file. I believe it is under slash etc. There is a file called init tab. And we'll bring it up into Emacs and look at it. Um, I hope you can all see this. Um, it's, you know, it's a file that we really don't have to modify or use much anymore. At one time, we had to modify this quite thing quite a bit. But let's look at it. Basically, it is a born shell script. Um, oh, well, I guess it's a configuration file, but it sure looks script-like. Um, I guess it is a configuration file. It's got lines that are not, uh, um, that are not commands. Um, these, let me see if I can find some interesting lines. These lines here are kind of interesting. What these lines are is these are the lines that actually do things when you change run levels. This is the command that tells it what to do as you change run levels. You see run level 4 doesn't do anything. <laughs> it's commented out. Um, and this is the run levels. So as you change run levels, it runs a program in here called RC, which we can look at in a little bit. RC is actually a born shell or a bash shell. I guess it's a bash shell on Linux systems that, um, that um, tell the system how to change the run levels. Um, another thing the system has in this file, in the init file, it's got some shutdown stuff. But one of the things I find interesting is right up in here, it's got some lines where it starts up some sort of thing called an a min getty, whatever a min getty is. But get, what getties are, and there are a getties, m getties, min getties, there's a lot of different thing, uh, commands that end in the word getty. And, but what they are is they're a little program that runs on a device that makes, that, that points out that little prompt that says log in, log in please and handles the login process. If you don't have an MGetty, a Getty running on a device, you can't log in. So if you notice, there are six of these. And I'm running SUS Linux right here. And notice there is an um, Control-Alt-F1, Control-Alt-F2, Control-Alt-F3, all the way up to Control-Alt-F6 are consoles that I can log in on. And uh, they let me log in. And then if I try to cut type, say, control all F8 or F9, it's just a blank screen. There's nothing there. That's because there's not a Getty running on those guys. If I would 
type in a new line here like like uh, like that. And reboot my system. Uh, save that file and reboot the system. I don't think I will save the file. But what would happen then is I would have a control alt F7 that would then be a console just like the other consoles. And the X window thing that normally goes on control alt F7 would actually get pushed up to control alt F8. Um, uh, and if you notice in distributions like Nopix, Nopix only has four or five, four of the uh, stat of the consoles. And look at the um, um, init tab file on Nopix, and you will see fewer lines uh, for MGetty uh, or for the MinGettys. And um, that it, that's why. Um, most distributions, of course, use six, but a uh, few of them uh, don't use as many. The other interesting thing is remember the old days, and this is where I used Getty a lot, is back in the old days when people used alphanumeric terminals, the DEC 100s and the, 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 the tele, um, or teletype machines, the um, uh, televideo, um, all of those um, interesting little al um, terminals that people use, the serial terminals, those all had to have their own Getty. And this here says it, it was they were A Gettys. Actually, there were things other than A Gettys. There were M Gettys and stuff too. But um, but what you did is right here you set up a line for every one of those devices that you could plug in. Um, so if you had like two serial ports on the back of your machine, you would set up two lines here for your serial ports. If you had a big box like the mainframes had, and you had a 100 of those coming off the back of your machine, which I did have a, a few hundred. It, then you would have a line there for every machine on the, uh, for every for every port that came out the back of your computer. Okay, so that's enough for init tab. Oh, except that we should just take a quick look at. Um, we don't need this anymore, and I am not going to save that file. Uh, let's go down into init.d. This is a good directory here. We are in slash etc slash init.d. And there are some interesting things here. The first thing I want to do is look at the rc. Remember that command rc that was down here? Well, this is the rc thing. If you read this, oh my, look at that. It's a bash shell. And if you read this, it's a long, long script that basically handles the changing of the run levels. And all it is is a, um, a bash shell, just like we're learning to write. So um, I, I thought that was cool. Um, the other thing you have here is a lot of scripts. Most all of these are bash shell scripts. Um, and they will, a lot of them, what they do is to start up and shut down um, um, various services and systems. So um, we'll take that up on the other side of the break here. So enough for now.